I was reading an article in Scientific American, well, for the second time today, actually, because I read it a few days ago and didn't understand it. But it was about um, consciousness. It was by Christopher Koch. And it was about uh, integrated information theory, as he calls it. And I think it's the, uh, it's the research done by a guy called Tononi at University of Wisconsin, Madison, I believe. Uh, and what he's talking about there is he's, he's basically saying that consciousness is a function of the complexity and the degree of integration within any system. And presumably that means a dynamic system, a system that's capable of, of having some kind of flow through it, or some kind of activation state, uh, with the brain being the archetypal example of a very complex system that's very, very integrated. And it comes out of this kind of mathematical formula which measures the degree of complexity and integration uh, within, any, within any system. But unfortunately, this mathematical formula is so complex that it would take like all the computers on Earth to, to measure the complexity rate of the simplest organism right now. Uh, but it's interesting. You know, I, I don't know if, that's, if it's valid or not. I have no idea. But it's, it's an interesting kind of theory. And there's lots of things come out of that, some of which are explored in this article. So, for example, it gives kind of covert support to panpsychism, sort of, because all systems are complex to some degree. Uh, and they cite things like individual cells, and they, they cite the, the hydrogen atom as being perhaps the, uh, the default low bar, really, on that measurement scale. It is a system, it has a degree of integration, but it's not a complex, not a very complex system. It's probably the simplest system, is what they're inferring. Uh, but since this um, integrated information theory specifies that something like consciousness is a function of the amount of that, and there's not a specific um, watershed point at which consciousness kicks in and which it doesn't, then everything has to be conscious to some degree. Although clearly nothing like, uh, not in any way similar to the way that human consciousness operates, to the extent that human consciousness operates like that at all. Because one of the things that came out of me for that was just thinking about you know, what the implications, well, what, it, what it implies really for human consciousness. Because certainly when I think about it, if I'm not thinking too hard about it. I imagine there being two states. I'm either conscious or I'm not. I'm awake or asleep. I'm in a coma or I'm wide awake. You know, those are, most of the fun stuff seems to happen in either one of those states. But if there's anything to um, this uh, IIT, information, integrated information theory, then um, there should be some kind of gradient between that. There should be that slope from, uh, from being wide awake down to through reverie and dreams to sleep uh, and we should be able to if you like track that slope track the gradient between consciousness and unconsciousness even in something like a human system and uh, and relate that to various um, in increases of integration within the human cognitive systems in, at least in principle uh, what it's also mentioned in this article is how I guess how that would work really it's saying that you know, in some um, some clinical conditions, some parts of the human cognitive system go offline, uh, and and what happens when, as a result of that, is the consciousness is disturbed, uh, that the the complexity is, is reduced or is is reconfigured, the, the degree of integration is reduced or is reconfigured, and consciousness is affected as a result. So specific types of types of brain lesion can result as in 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 that part of consciousness that we call the perception of movement disappearing, or that part of, the con of our consciousness that we call recognition of faces can disappear. So it's absolutely at the level of qualia, absolutely at the level of, of phenomenal lived experience. Faces don't go away. You can, you can see the elements of faces if you have, I think it's called prosop prosopagnosia. I think that's right. Uh, so if you have this, and you have this brain lesion which has destroyed your ability to recognize faces, you can still see all the elements, but your ability to recognize them has disappeared. And I guess that's kind of support for the, this idea that different, uh, as integration is lost, uh, then specific features of, of consciousness is lost, which is much more complex than the either you're awake or you're asleep thing, which I, tend, I think tends to figure in certainly my understanding. Come on, you two. I don't think there'll be a fight, but you never know with our two dogs.
Hello. Anyway, that was one of the two things emerge out of it for me in terms of personal experience. One is to do with uh, <laughs> one is to do with uh, the experience that I have of going to sleep, and I quite often fall asleep either reading a book or watching television. And what I sometimes notice uh, is that when I uh, yeah, just as I'm going to sleep. What doesn't tend to happen is I don't just like blank out and the page doesn't disappear in front of me and then everything goes dark and I slip into unconsciousness. What tends to happen is that, um, that quite often, several times, I'll kind of wake up a little bit and realise that the last few lines that I've read I've just made up or the last few scenes of the film I'm watching are just fiction that I've invented. It's almost as if my something about my perception is shutting down but other parts of my consciousness like my ability to, to, to structure narratives, for example, or, or my ability to, to compile, um, yeah, to, 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 to have some kind of persistent line through and to develop stories is, is maintained. So it's a, it's a small personal reflection, but there's, there's something there for me about that. And the other experience is a, a, a personal relationship after that, which is connected to that one, actually concerns my mum, who I think I mentioned in a few videos back, was in hospital, and indeed is still in hospital, a little bit better than she was. She were told she was, uh, she was, uh, well, she was, we were told she was only had a few days left, but she, she's actually thri uh, thriving, to the extent that a 93-year-old can thrive, um, and, uh, and is doing quite well. But uh, one of the things about that is she's, she's only lucid for about 50% of the time she's awake. About 50% of the time she knows who I am, she knows who my brother is, she knows who my sister is and she can make perfectly salient observations about the experience that she's having. But the other 50% of the time she's confabulating. So either she knows who I am and, and, is, and, and doesn't know what the environment is, so she thinks she's somewhere else, or she doesn't know who I am and, 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 and thinks I'm someone else and so on. So. Um, She's clearly in a kind of confabulatory state, but there's no separation between it. She'll, she'll, start, she'll begin a sentence talking about the hospital that she's in, talking about the people in the beds near her, and without any kind of sign that there's something changing, the story will just proceed into, um, into fiction. The walls will begin to move, she'll say, or she'll talk about the taxi that's waiting for her outside, or she'll talk about the, uh, the chairs that we're sitting on, as the, the chairs that she's bought and don't they look nice in her house. So there's, there's clearly some things, and she's, all the time she's doing this, she's perfectly lucid, and she's making eye contact, and she's, she's doing all of the other aspects of consciousness that one would expect, but some part of consciousness to do with perception and just acknowledging where you are is, is, is kind of gone offline, really. She's, uh, it's, it's quite beautiful, because she's a lovely old lady. She, it's quite beautiful to listen to her do this, really. And it's, it, it is slightly disturbing at the same time, I have to say. She did it lovely a couple of days ago. I was up there with my brother. Uh, and my brother is, uh, was in the Navy for a long time, and then he worked on the oil rigs most of his life. Still works on the oil rigs. And, uh, no, he's a big guy, big tough guy. And uh, Elsie, my mum, was, was doing this thing. She, was conf she, she started off a sentence and then began confabulating. And, and most of the time she's fine with it, but occasionally she notices that she's doing it. And she'll say, oh, that didn't happen, did it? I made that up. Um, and sometimes that bothers her. And she, she got to this state, so she was making this, she was talking sensibly, went into a kind of land of, of fiction, and then just started to realise that she was confabulating. And, I could, and we could just see the kind of flickers of anxiety crossing her face. And my brother, bless him, he just started saying this nursery rhyme from when he was a kid, something about a dolly on a shelf, I, I can't remember it myself. And he got to about four words into this, this nursery rhyme, and Elsie just lit up. It was fantastic to watch, actually. She, um, she completely recognised this thing and just joined in on the next word and just did the whole, the whole nursery rhyme faultlessly from beginning to end. Um, and immediately came back. You know, she knew who Bernard was, she knew who I was, she knew where she was. She laughed about the fact that she was making things up and she was a bit doolally. It was a, a lovely little moment, really. Anyway, I guess what's happening there is if, if Tononi's theory has any validity at all, and I don't know if it has, but it's, it's, it's a nice one, then different little, different little bits of 
of this complex integrated system that is my mum is uh, are shutting down little bits there uh, and coming back online occasionally and reintegrating into the whole person that she is and uh, well uh, sooner or later they're going to shut down completely